saying that for editing purposes, and let's move into the first Steve Stubbs. Buddy! Yes! So, I have the AMC A-List, and what that is is a subscription service where for nineteen ninety five a month, I get up to three free movies a week, and I really took advantage of it pre-pandemic. From December 2018 to March 2020, I saw a whopping, a whopping 177 showings in a 66-week period, which I'm pretty uh, uh, proud of. Then the pandemic came and messed with my groove, but now movie theaters are back open, and so am I. So it's time once again for some up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week! Dun, 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 dun. So this week's installment of Steve Stubbs represents my 24th week back in theaters, this side of the pandemic, and in that time I have seen 40, 40... 44 movies in theaters. I saw two this week, but I'm going to be talking about three different movies. So this week I saw the following two movies in theaters. The Irish drama Belfast. And uh, you probably not heard of this next movie. It's an older one. It's from 1999. I believe it's pronounced The Matrix. Yeah. I think. Um, yeah, that, that movie that was about America's refusal to move over to the metric system. Yeah, it's it stars uh, Joe Pantoliano yes. as uh, a man named Cypher, and it also has one of the Bill and Ted dudes in it. I also want to talk about uh, a movie, it's an indie <coughs> comedy, that... It showed in some theaters and then went straight as like a digital release. It's called Together Together. Really want to talk about that. But first, let's discuss the movies that were not chosen as my movie pick of the week. Number one, The Matrix. When that movie came out in 1999, I was a manager at a video store in Glendale, Arizona. It's not there anymore. <laughs> I was a manager of a video store called The Electric Banana. Don't look for it. It's not there. Uh, but there I saw a band. That band's name was Spinal Tap. So I I was focused on the video store. I would end up working like 40, 50, 55. I worked 58 hours one week. I was a manager, and so I was expected, like, I almost, I was this close to working open to close one day. Yeah. Because just no one else could come in, no no one else wanted to go in. None of the other managers gave a crap. I spent I spent way too much time working, and so I never saw the Matrix in theaters. And so, it, with the release of the upcoming Matrix Resurrections, they showed it again in select theaters. So I went to go see it, and I was worried at the time because the Matrix means something different in 2021. You know, in 1999. Okay. In 1999, it was like, wow, what an amazing film. Wow, uh, bullet time and action movies and sci-fi. This is an incredible film. But now, you know, red pill means something different. Yeah. You know, I've been awakened. I can see through the left and their lies. I've been red pilled. I, I, I'm not a part of the Matrix, you know? So I was worried that, like, there could be some thin blue line gun-toting, like, right-wing motherfuckers in this theater. And I was yeah. worried about that. But there was only eight people in the theater. Here's the crazy part. Based on their reactions, I would say about half of them had never fucking seen The Matrix before. Really? Because there were some people that were like, Oh! Oh! Oh, did you see that? And it's like, <coughs> have you never fucking seen The Matrix? Like, I'm fucking shocked that there are people who are like, oh, The Matrix. Oh, I've heard of that. Maybe we should go see it, honey. Like, really? Like, I didn't see The Matrix in theaters, but I saw that like a shit ton of times. You know? So now I'm worried about the new film, you know, because, like, I loved the first Matrix movie. The second one was okay. I remember the freeway. B 
being just like blown away by the freeway scene. I don't remember anything from the third one. I remember a fight in the rain. Yeah. And and that's all I remember. But like I, I'm just interested to see how they would do another Matrix now. Yeah. I don't know if you can do 1999's The Matrix in 2021 and have it be as important as the 1999 one was, but it was nice to see to finally see The Matrix in theaters. Uh, I am hoping, really hoping, that the next Matrix movie does not dig through the ditches and does not burn any witches. Yeah. I am hoping that no one slams in the back of their Dragula. Fingers crossed. We can only hope. Not a big fan of Rob Zombie. I feel that... I read somewhere that Rob Zombie is the Rob Zombie of movies. Yeah. And I love that so much. I, so, uh, I find Rob Zombie kind of hit and miss. I'm always interested in what Rob Zombie is doing and whether he's going to be able to pull it off. But it's it's really a crapshoot. He could do something really good. I really kind of liked Lords of Salem. That was a pretty fucked up movie. Uh, but Halloween, like, what can I say? Halloween. Yeah. <coughs> I'm working on a new film right now, and you're not going to believe it. Sherry Moon Zombies in it. Yeah. See, I don't what? know. I don't fault him for that. I think that's cute. They love each other. It's nice. You know, why is this something to to vilify him with? You know. I just don't. I just don't think she's a good actress. No, she's not. What difference does it make? He puts his wife in Nothing movies. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not like he's the first one who's ever done that. Yeah, I guess. Like Woody Allen's making a movie. You're not going to believe it. Woody Allen's in it. Yeah. And yeah. whoever he's dating at the time. You're not going to believe it. He plays a nebbish Jew. Mm -hmm. What? So, uh, so that's The Matrix. There's a second movie I want to talk about. I didn't see it in theaters, but I saw it this week, and it's one of my favorite movies of the year. It's a uh, low-budget indie comedy called Together Together. It's about a 40-something man. He is single. He is divorced. And he wants to uh, have a baby, so he gets a surrogate mother uh, played by Patty Harrison. And at first, they're very standoffish towards each other. It's basically a romantic comedy, but without the romance. Because at first, you know, he is paying her and it's clinical and there's a bunch of rules and, and on what you can do and what you can't do and then as the movie progresses they learn to actually care about each other and by the end they love each other but not in a romantic way it's just these two people going through this together and it's it's a very you know deep relationship that they have and i like it very much but the film stars patty harrison yeah. Okay. I first saw her in, in season one of I Think You Should Leave with Tim Robbins. Okay. She's in a skit where she works at an office and uh, they get a new printer and someone says, oh, Santa came early and everyone laughs. So then she starts doing a shit ton of Santa jokes that don't land. And she just keeps saying these Santa jokes to try and make the office laugh, and everyone hates it. Yeah. And finally, at the end, she goes, Oh, Paul says uh, a joke about Santa, and everyone laughs. I give you a hundred Santa jokes, and you ghost me? And I <laughs> thought it was really funny, and she did a really good job in that skit. So then in season two of I Think You Should Leave. I was hoping for them to bring back certain characters, and they didn't do that, but they brought back a bunch of actors from season one, and so Patty Harrison is in two skits in season two, and they're my two favorite skits. Number one, she was in the Shark Tank parody 
and she's saying how she got her fortune. I was accidentally sewn into the pants of the giant Charlie Brown balloon in the Thanksgiving Day Parade. <laughs> to this day, I hate bald boys. I despise <coughs> bald boys. <coughs> when I see a bad, a bald boy, I think I'm back in the pants. <laughs> And then she's in a great skit at the end of season two where it's like a driver's ed class and they're showing a video of the dangers of distracted driving and her job is tables. Okay. And she, she's complaining about her tables. It's like, like, I don't know what Eddie Munster did to my tables. They look like they were th thrown in a mud puddle. So I fell in love with Patty Harrison. I found out that was her name. I looked her up on YouTube. And there's a bunch of, like, her stand-up. And she's so hilarious. And she does this one song, which is a song that she says she wrote for Dua Lipa. It, she's such a funny comedian. And then I fell in love with her. So I wanted to know more about Patty Harrison. And I looked her up on uh, Wikipedia. And it wasn't until I fell in love with her and was obsessed with her that I realized through her Wikipedia page, she's a trans woman. Okay. So she is now my hero. And one of the reasons why I love Together Together, number one, I love films that star a man and a woman, and they don't kiss. They're just close and together, and they're best friends. And that's where the title comes from. It, they're not together together. Yeah. They're together, but they're not together together. And just the fact that this trans woman was hired to be a pregnant woman, and there's no, they don't make a big deal about it. They don't even mention it. It, it, it means a lot to me that she is in this movie. She is my new favorite hero, and I love this film. It's one of my favorite movies of the year, Together Together. Everyone should find it and watch it. It's sweet. It's Ed Helms and Patty Harrison, and they're together, but they're not together together. It's a really sweet. It um, Was it the New York Times? I'm not sure. Some newspaper said that it's the best romantic comedy of the year, and also there's no romance in it. So that's together together. I can't recommend it enough. And finally... The Steve Stubbs movie pick of the week is uh, Belfast. It's a mostly black and white film written and directed by Kenny Branagh. And it's about violent civil unrest in Northern Ireland in the 1960s. And I, I'm no history genius, but apparently uh, Ireland has some violent unrest sometimes then might come as a shock to you oh god it was huge dude <laughs> yeah but but basically like uh oh we're irish and we're a protestant nation we're all protestant and we love it and then some irish people are like hey we're also here and we're catholics and then eventually the protest some of the protestants are like okay well we're gonna form gangs and we're going to start setting things on fire, destroying shops, because we want the fucking Catholics out. And then suddenly the government is coming in, and the, there's all this violence and tension and civil unrest, and entire neighborhoods are closing down like their streets and their blocks with barricades and weapons, because all of these uh, violent gangs of Protestants are like destroying neighborhoods to try and get the Catholics out so the neighborhoods have to band together to protect like their street and their block from these violent groups. And um, is, is that the direction Kenny Branagh took? Yeah. Uh, it's a very serious subject, <coughs> and it's worthy of Oscar bait, but here's the thing. Um, it's fun as fuck. Fun? Yeah. It's funny. It's fun because the entire film is from the point of view of this one family's, like, eight-year-old child. Yeah. And so it's from this little kid's point of view. And, yes, there's violence, but also it's almost Christmas. 
and I want to go to the movies. They're showing Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. There's this girl I like in school. I'm going to hang yeah. out with my grandparents. My grandfather's uh, kind of giving me all my math answers. And and it's it it's this is a serious drama about civil unrest uh and violence in Northern Ireland, but also it's funny and it's sweet and at times it's more lighthearted than it probably should be for like a serious drama about violence in Ireland but mm -hmm. I was surprised with how fun it was Yeah, this was a fun movie I didn't expect uh, this to be so much fun also you learn things because I'm, I, I'm like oh there's going to be all this Irish music I don't know and then they play a moon dance by Van Morrison and it's like oh shit that's Van Morrison I know this song I love this song and then they play another Van Morrison song, and I'm like, oh, that's another Van Morrison song I know. I think that's all the Van Morrison songs I know. I'm not a big Van Morrison fan. Yeah. And then they play another song, and it's like, I don't know this song. Pretty sure that's Van Morrison. So after, after the, like, fifth or sixth Van Morrison song, I look up Van Morrison on Wikipedia. Oh, there you go. He's from Belfast. I didn't know that. Yeah. So... Uh, it, it's a learning experience, but I was surprised at how fun this Oscar bait is. So, um, West Side Story is gonna get like a bunch yeah. of Oscars, and I don't give a but, shit but about let's that. Let's just let's just make this clear, okay? That the Catholic Protestant thing was pretty was pretty much an overblown point. When the real point is that the United Kingdom took over fucking Northern Ireland. Northern Ireland was part of the United Kingdom, which happens to be quite Protestant. Yeah, there's took a bit over of that. the upper half of Ireland from Ireland, yeah. which just happens to be predominantly Catholic. Yeah, there's a bit of that in the movie, too, but... It did not really have a whole hell of a lot to do with the religion. Yeah. Well, it's more about the religion in the movie, but it there's not a lot of context about what caused this and why it's happening and what's happening. Because, again, the POV's like an eight-year-old. Yeah. Well, that's so, why I'm here, damn it. Thank you. But it's a really good movie, and it's uh, more fun than it probably should be. And Van Morrison is from Belfast, so the more you know. And, uh, yeah, that's my uh, movie pick of the week, Belfast. It's pretty fun. It's actually a pretty fun movie. I was surprised at how many times I laughed in this Irish drama. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, worth a watch, <coughs> Belfast. I'll be rooting for it in the Oscars. And they'll be like, oh... West Side Story, like, ah, oh, I don't give a shit. But Belfast, hey. Hopefully, the guy who plays the dad gets nominated for an Oscar because he was also the love interest in Barb and Star go to Vista Del Mar. Really? Best movie of the year. So, Best movie of the year. I, I, I can concur to that. Yeah. So I was really, like, it took me about, it took me a while to realize, like, oh, shit, that's where I know that guy from. God damn. Yeah, he wants to be an official couple. So, like, oh, good for him. Yeah. So, yeah, Belfast. That's it for uh, Steve Stubbs this week. Actually not, because we're doing two this week. But that's, that's it for this Steve Stubbs of the week. Uh... Join us next time for more up-to-date movie reviews with Steve Stubbs of the Week! And cut on that Steve Stubbs of the Week. So now, uh... Bye!